Hey, everyone. Welcome to my show, my so-called fabulous. I'm Tiffany Blackman. It's so good to talk to you today. And I'm bringing you my precious, precious friend, Stacey Danford. Welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to be back. I know, the Grateful Brain, you're back. We're for our our number two series. We're in our series this year of building fabulous relationships. And that's what we're working on. We did the first one last week, which we talked quite a bit about how to love yourself. Yes, super important. Yes, absolutely. And we are going on to something that is really, really near and dear to all of our hearts, but friendships. Yes. How to cultivate friendships. Nurture friendship. And it is more important than people know. Is it? Yes, it is. Yeah. You know, do do girls have more friends than guys? It's typically? actually the opposite. You're kidding no. me. Men tend to have longer lasting friendships and deeper friendships early on. And they tend to keep them better than women do. Women have more friends, mm-hmm. you know, Quantity over quality. And men tend to have quality. And quality is what's important to your brain. Wow. Yeah. Is that right? That's true. So let me tell you this. So when I met Greg, I don't know, I've never told you this, but we, um, he met me offline. He had a firm out of Chicago find the love of his life. And he found me. I was in their database. Go figure. And um, when I was talking to his, he calls it his handler, when I was talking to her, she said, you know, he really doesn't have a lot of friends. His friends are his brothers, because his his two brothers, because they had a business together. Uh-huh. And um, I'm like, oh, that's weird because I have a ton of friends. Uh-huh. Like the more the merrier. And I was in my early 40s, like 30s at the time. And so it was more the merrier. You be my friend. Friend, uh-huh. friend. Can I be my friend? So when I met him, he said, no, I just have my brothers. They're my friend. And what I think at the phase of his life, Stacy, was... Um, he said that it seems like he would cultivate f- friendships and they wanted something from him, uh-huh. either a job or an opportunity. But now that Greg has retired and we're married and he just welcomes my friends like crazy, he has more friends from high school, like you're saying. We'll go to a TC football game and he goes, that's my frat brother. Uh-huh. That's this. And so you're right. Yeah. He has had these lifelong friends. Now, maybe there was a phase of his life. Right. Right. Probably where he was super busy. And re- sometimes men, when they're raising children and, you know, jobs and they're trying to be everything at their house, they kind of lose track sometimes of their, you know, friends and mm-hmm. they don't go do stuff. Right. But it's always a sign of a healthy person to have friends. Absolutely. Right. And they sure. can be your brother. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yes. So your friendship. So I, is that true? What I said, like I was at a point with my life. I was just, I wanted so many friends, the more quality, more quantity over quality. Yeah. But now I'm just like, of course I love having friends and I do have girlfriends crazy, but, and guy friends, but it's the quantity, the quality now. It's important. Right. And I think sometimes we call people we know our friend and, oh, that's my friend. That's my friend. But I always say a friend is somebody who's going to come bring you chicken soup when you're sick and drive you to the hospital to have surgery. Mm-hmm. And those are the friends I'm talking about mm-hmm. when we talk about the benefits to your brain. Because sometimes, especially like you, because you're kind of in the public eye, so you do have a lot of acquaintance mm-hmm. friends. And yes. you know a ton of people and, you know, and you can enjoy their company and all that. But those aren't necessarily the friends that are beneficial for your brain. Right. And there's a, there's a big difference. Okay. Explain that to me. Okay. So the benefit to your brain is to have someone that you can count on, a, a social friend that you can tell your troubles to, that they don't judge you. They'll tell you the truth, like your hair looks terrible like that Mm -hmm. or all the things. And that is what is actually helpful to you in your longevity of your life. The longest research study ever done in Harvard is about friendships. Really? And it's so amazing. They start, they didn't start it out to be that. And it started out many years ago. I think it was in the thirties when it started, uh, maybe the twenties, I can't remember the date, but they, 
took men ha- exactly half, half were from Harvard, and then half were from Boston's poorest population. And they studied them their whole entire lives. Well, when that was over, they studied their children's lives. And now they're in the fourth generation of these people, their great grandkids, and they're still studying them. And there's tens of thousands pieces of evidence of, you know, they've studied their heart, they've studied their brain, they've studied all kinds of things. And what they found is fascinating, that the quality of your friendships as as important or more so than all the other things that we think add longevity to our life, like health, smoking, drinking, exercise. The quality of your friends is as important to the longevity as those things. Wow. It's fascinating. And what they found was that it didn't matter if you started your life at Harvard or you started at the poorest you know, places in Boston, it was equal along the way. Really? And the people, it didn't matter how much money you came from or how much money you ended up with. What mattered was the quality of your friendships. Isn't that something? It's a fascinating research study. What is a quality, good quality of a friend other than what you were saying earlier? I think it's someone that you can count on at all times. And I know my husband, he's got the best friends. He he? he played football at A&M. And so he calls them his 12 man brothers. And they talk almost every day on the phone. They'll text message, you know, something, but they know each other's birthdays. They've been there for divorces and births. And, you know, one of his friends lost two children at one time Mm -mm. in a car wreck. Mm -mm. And it was just, it's hard heartbreaking. And just the other day, they did a moment of silence for, you know, his kids. Cause it was the day Mm-mm. that they had passed away years ago. And, you know, they, they're good friends. Wow. And they, we still get together, you know, at Aggie games and I tag along, you know, as the <laughs> Aggie comrade. Um, but it's, I've always been really fascinated by that. He's got friends he went to kindergarten with. They still talk. He is a great friend. I have to say he is very diligent to contact people and, you know, just checking up on you mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, that's, that's good. That's a yeah. great attribute. You know, um, Greg, I, I look at his friendships and I, I do, I mean, I, when we walk into we walk into a bar and and it's he's like this is my it's an SAE fraternity brother and they just and they grew up in Fort uh-huh. Worth together the majority was kind of a Fort Worth uh-huh. that was a Fort Worth uh, boys club at, at yes. TCU but they all grew up together they went to Pascal and and now some of the wives are friends and yes. you know and again I'll say my friends but. But that's a different kind, I, I would say. say yeah. yeah. Tell me about these Because wives. I have a lot of friends just like that. You know, so my husband's wives have become my friend. And those are great. And they're they're fun to have at the ball game and whatever. And, you know, even sometimes we go on trips together. But they're not the people I call when I'm hurt, sad, glad, excited, need help with a situation in life or something. Though Those are the friends. The quality of those friendships is so important. And what's crazy is they found out in another research study that the average person has less than one friend. So the, the statistic was 0.5, which what? I don't know how they measure that, but, but you know, the average, you know, the people who have three and the, I guess people okay, have zero, mm-hmm. but the average person does not have a single friend that they can count on in times mm-hmm. of need. Mm-hmm. And that is part of what is, I think, creating the skyrocketing depression, anxiety, suicide, when you don't have anybody to talk to and you don't have anybody to let your feelings out, that's not your spouse, you know, mm-hmm. or you, cause you can't tell your wife how much she's driving you crazy to your wife. No, you cannot. <laughs> it's going to hurt somebody's feelings and right. cause a bigger problem. Right. But I have one of my longest, deepest, dearest friend is lives in Lubbock. And she was the one I was telling you, I just went to mm-hmm. see a couple of weeks ago and we always just pick up right where we left off. We talk at least once a week on the phone and we just have a lifelong bond that is different than other friends. Right. And I would definitely say she is one of my dearest friends in the world. And, you know, and and I'll call her when I'm sad. She's been through my numerous divorces with me, you know, (laughs) and she's had issues in her life. We've been at each other's daughters, you know, Mm -hmm. events and weddings. And she helped me do my son's rehearsal dinner. And and I just know if I need something, I can count on her. Right. You know, um, I have a friend, I'm trying to think how long we've been friends, probably 27 years, I guess, you know, not a childhood friend though. Uh This is a, uh, you know, adult adult friendship. Uh Um, 
she was having babies. I had my baby. And I, I, I described this as, now this is kind of, probably shouldn't say this, but if I went to jail, she'd bake a cake and there'd uh-huh, be a file uh-huh. in it. That remember that saying? Yeah. Yeah. That would be her. She's Thelma to your Louise. Yeah, it's exactly. That would be my Meg. And um, but she always you're right. She um she's she's been through some hurt and had to tell me some hard things and, mm-hmm. and vice versa. Right. You know, just going through things and saying things you really don't want to say, right. but, but you say it. And that's the way Carla and I are is, you know, she's the one person I know will never judge me. Right. She's seen me at my best. She's seen me at my worst and all mm-hmm. in between. Mm-hmm. And the same with her. And she tells me all the time, you know, she's got a situation that she doesn't necessarily love. And she said, you know, I'm just telling you this just because I know you'll listen and you're not going to judge me. And, you know, we've, we don't necessarily always offer advice either. We're just there to listen. listen. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important. Right. Now, now, when when did you cultivate that friendship? We started becoming friends. Our girls, we lived four houses down from each other in Snyder. That's how we knew each other. But our girls are exactly the same age. Their birthdays are a week apart. Wow. And they went to daycare together and then little gymnastics together. And so that's how we started, you know, knowing so, each other. So it's an adult friend yes. like mine. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So... Go back to elementary school. Um, did you? I don't have any elementary friends or even high school. Yeah. And I would say, or even college. Yeah. And where men, they just yes. do. Oh my goodness. That's right. They do. Because I do have, you know. I have friends. Yeah. 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 Um, I had a, 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 a girl that lived next door to me and our moms were best friends. And they lived next door. And then we went to college together and that we were freshmen in college and roommates. Don't ever move in with your best friend. Uh-huh. But, but you know what I mean? So then we, you know, grew apart and, and, and so it happens, but she's my friend, but right. you would think that would be a woman that, that the woman would cultivate those kindergarten friendships, not to say that there's not, I right. mean, for sure, but isn't that interesting? It, uh-huh. it is very interesting. And it's, it's kind of almost shocking because it's like you said, it seems like it would be the opposite. And now, but my mother, she has childhood friends. And yeah. I always wonder like, hey, what did you do that I didn't, I didn't know how to do or what? And, you know, and I'm still friends on Facebook with oh, some of sure. the kids I went to elementary school and then college and high school. But it's not, they're not the people that call me when they're sad. And I don't necessarily sure. call them either. Right. You know, and I do love, um, I do love Facebook because I do get to see, yes, you know, grandbabies being born mm-hmm. and marriages and because you and I both are very small town. Yes. And they're. There's, there was 14 people in my graduating class and I bet you 10 still live in that small town. They probably, uh-huh. and I see those friendships just because they're in that small same town. Place, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very same place in small town. And, and it's, so it's, it's a different, it's a different, it's a different feel. It yeah. is a different feel. And then cultivating your friendships as you are as an adult. And I think a lot of it too, and this is just my personal <laughs> opinion, but I think when women get married, and move in a lot of times it's to the husband's place and where he works and where he, and women tend to move out mm-hmm. more so mm-hmm. than men. And I think it, we just kind of go along our way differently and we get involved in our children and the children's sports. And oh, those yeah. people become our friends. Mm-hmm. And I know when my big son, when he graduated from high school, I felt like I'd lost literally half of my friends because we had, he started playing baseball when he was four Mm-mm. and then he played all the way through college. But those parents and I, you know, had been together at every ball game and then, you know, the all stars and the little league world series and all the things for, you know, 10 years Mm -hmm. and we saved each other seats and we always wore the colors and we, you know, if we found a cup that was the color, we, we'd buy five or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, Mm -hmm. I never knew that was going to happen when he graduated as I just lost all my friends. Yes. Yes. Yes, and it happens. And Kennedy graduated in 2017, and she was the same thing. Cheered from fifth grade, sixth grade on All the, way. the same group of women. There's, I think, there was actually 12 of the cheerleaders and the seniors. And um, I, I just, they, I at, and friends with them still, uh-huh. still. Uh-huh. But we're not together every week, right? Every single week, week. saving uh-huh. seats, going to dinner, and. I remember when she graduated, the depression of her leaving to go to college right. 
And then me losing those, not losing, but just not that. Not being there. Yeah. Yes. Not that being present. And um, I was working on our podcast last night and I text two of my girlfriends from there. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I just miss, I miss that. Yeah, friendship. You know what yeah. I mean? I miss that. And life has changed so much. Yeah. You know, life has moved on, but that's a different friend though. It, it is. is. It's it a different is. kind of friend. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, call and if you're sick, bring a casserole uh -huh. or something, but, but no, I, I agree. 1000% that, that the child, and I did front tell my friend Ellen, I said, you are going to, her children are young. I said, you're going to have these friends along the way and then they'll be gone. They'll be gone. Mm -hmm. You know, they're always and on it, Facebook. And it's <laughs> funny how we still, like at, at my big son's wedding, you know, a, all those people came back sure. and, and I got to see them again. And it was so fun to see them again. And it was like, oh, I remember these times when we all thought our boys were the greatest things on mm -hmm. earth. And, but then we all, you know, went home and went our ways and we live all over different places now. And, and, you know, they're still my friends. They were still there to support my son, but it's, it's just, it's different. Mm -hmm. And the friendships that change the way your brain works and change the way your body processes things are the friends that you can call on anytime, any day that, that you can say, oh my gosh, I'm having marriage trouble or, oh my gosh, my you know, I'm about to get laid off. And those are the people that a circumstance does not make you friends. So it's not a ball game or your child. Those people are not the same as the ones that are your real friend every day of the week, not on Friday night during right. football games that are the ones that change the way that we function as humans. Exactly. That makes such sense. Okay. Here's a question for you. Okay. Can't it, because sometimes I, I, I am hesitant to say, I have, oh, she's my best friend. Uh -huh. She's my, and I feel guilty because right. I have all these, you know. Can I you have, have more the, than one I know, best can friend? I have one best friend? <laughs> I mean, what is, what is that? What is that? You really can have more than one best friend, I think. Um, the, I think the research number is three, if I remember correctly, <laughs> I that can you have can three. have three to five. And then after that, they become more of right. acquaintance type people. Wow. And, you know, there's so many people out there that overuse, oh, this is my bestie. This is my so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And we do it more social because that's a word now. Mm -hmm. And not that that's really, really your best friend. And, you know, because I've got a lot of people that I would say are my besties. I've got a lot of mm -hmm. those. That would be me. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. And, but then I probably have one, maybe two best friends mm -hmm. that I'm like, okay, I'm down in the dumps here. And and my friend Kimberly is, is somebody that I would call one of my best friends. And she helped me through my divorce and mm -hmm. I helped her through hers. And, you know, they're the people that are like, okay, I need, and, and she did bring me chicken soup yeah. and, and help me paint my fireplace when I didn't want it to look like my ex-husband lived yeah. there. And, and I remember I wanted to paint polka dots on my fireplace because I was just so mad that he left. And she was like, now, do you really want to do that? I'll help you. Yeah, I'll and do we it. can find a stencil, <laughs> but our, you're going to maybe rethink this next weekend. You're like, it's just me. It's just me. <laughs> um, but those are people that I would say are your best friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And besties are people that you could have the best time with. Mm -hmm. And this would be so much fun. And we could, you know, go on vacation. It'd be great. And all the things, mm -hmm. that, and those people are wonderful. Don't discount them, but they're not the ones that are changing the quality of your being. Exactly. And healing your broken heart. Yes. And celebrating you. Yeah, right. Unconditionally. Right. You know, because there are those friends that I remember when Kennedy was growing up and then all, you know, different phases of my life and my career of they're not your friends. Uh-huh. You know yeah. what I mean? That's, and then that's true. You know what I'm saying? They leave. And and when things are tough and you're like, wow, I thought you were my friend. Yeah. And comparing children. Yes. Have it, you, mm -hmm. you've, with your children? Because especially because my big son was the superstar. And I, I remember vividly at one basketball game we were at. And one of the other parents on the other team was yelling. And this was like little dribblers, you know, so we were still from the same town. And it was yelling, kill him, oh, no. kill him. And I was like, that's my son. Oh, like, don't, gosh. please don't kill him. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I mean, wow. Is this basketball game that important mm -hmm, to you? Mm -hmm. And I remember getting my feelings hurt over that. And, and you didn't know the woman, right? No, we were friends. <gasps> yes. Or, you know, yeah. the so-called oh, friends. Air quote. And I was like, wow. wow. Okay. Now. Yeah. 
So that's what I'm talking about. There's she and she would have gone to dinner with me. She would have sat with me at the restaurant and had fun. And she was a nice lady. But in that moment, the comparison of my son doing better than her son Oh. It it was shocked. I was like, "Wow, we're not the kind of friends I thought we were." Right, you know, right. that, that's brutal. I know that that is, I mean that is that's telling. And the the friends that and this is a negative that really do not want you to succeed, right? You know, and I've watched that with different people, my daughter, that just don't want you to succeed. And how do you weed? that out because people are good. Oh yeah. But I I can tell you my favorite quote of all time from Maya Angelou says, when people show you who they are, believe them Mm. the first time. Yeah. And because people do not change. And I cannot even tell you how many times I use that quote over and over and over. And what happens is we are hurt the third, fourth and fifth time. And we're like, man, why didn't I, you know, and you knew it, you knew it back when, mm-hmm. but you didn't listen because we think, oh, they didn't mean that or all of that, you know, but it's true. People very rarely change their personality unless they want to. Right. And it can happen, you know, mm-hmm. and I think I've said when the first podcast that my dad was alcoholic and was, you know, uh, almost all of my life. But when I told him I was pregnant with Brady, who's 12, He said, I will never have another grandkid. No, I'm a drunk. (laughs) And he locked himself in a hotel room and he said, I'm going to come out sober or I'll be dead. Oh my goodness. And to this day, he's not, he doesn't drink. And and Brady's fixing to be 13. And so I know people can change and I've seen it a lot in my business if they want to. Mm -hmm. But when you're changing for someone else or for the circumstance, or you're trying to act proper at the ball game or the cheer Mm -hmm. event or whatever, though that you got to be aware of that. Right. Because when people People show you who they are. Believe them. You know, and the, take us to the workplace. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. And the backbiting and the, because if people are truly your friend, they will be happy for your success. Yes. And what so many people don't realize is there's enough for all of us. And we think there's like this tiny little limited amount of success. And if you got it, I can't have any, but that's so not true. And there's no research that backs that up whatsoever. So that's all a figment of our belief system. And we feel like if you're successful, then I'm less successful. And that's, that's just not true. Mm -hmm. And those people I would be very careful of, and and those are not your friends. And that's why you don't sleep with the boss. Oh yeah. (laughs) Because if you climb that way on your way up, get ready for what's going to happen on the way way down. down. Absolutely. I know. And it it is. I mean, it it is a form of a friendship. Yes. That goes too far. And a lot of times, too, when there's a misaligned friendship where one is giving, 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 and one is taking, 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 that people need to be very careful of that. And, and one of the things I do in my business is I give people a little sheet and they put the top five people that they're involved with the most. And then they put a plus or minus on all these little different characteristics that are on the side. Does that person add to your life or do they take from your mm-hmm. life? And it was very eye opening for some people to realize, wow, this person has five minuses on their name, Mm-mm. meaning they're not giving anything to you. Mm-hmm. But we think if they want to be with us, they're our friend. But that's not always the case right. because sometimes you're feeding them, you're making them feel better, or you're paying for dinner, or whatever the thing may be. And you look back and go, wow, you never buy my dinner. Right. And you never ask about my kids. Yes. You're always telling me about yours, yours. and I'm excited for you, but you have never once asked me about mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, uh, we've had Greg and I have mutual friends, and I, and I have, I've, I've mentioned that to him. I said, did you notice they didn't ask one time about our children, uh-huh. our life? And and to me, that That's it's an sign. interview. Uh-huh. It's an interview. I mean, I really do feel like friendships are, it's, you know, bouncing back. Yeah. And forth. Now there's times that I'm just going to sit on the phone with Meg mm-hmm. and cry for an hour. Right. And then I'll go, oh, wait, how are you? I'm uh-huh. sorry. But right. she knows that, that that's but not that's the norm. But that's a single event, not every, every time. Every time. Oh. Absolutely. But that's true. That's that is very true. I mean, never one time ask how you're doing. Right. And that, that would be a minus on their column. (laughs) They are not a plus (laughs) at all, but yes. And that just is, it's, and at this stage of our lives, you know, in every stage of our lives, but especially this stage of our life, it's just like, gosh, we're just not going to, we're not going to spend with people that are toxic. Right. Is that right? Is that a correct word? And it's so important because, you know, 
after you pass 50, you're like, wow, Yeesh. I have less life left than I've I spent. Know. And I mean, I was very eye opening for me. I was like, oh my gosh, even if I have another 50 years and this is my halfway point, those last 10 are going to be, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not going to be wearing high heels or, Mm-mm. you know, it's going to no. be tough straling. So I, I was very clear with what I wanted the last part of, you know, if I have a two part journey, what I want that part to look like. And I want it to be joyful and beneficial and exciting. And there, I am very, very, very good at reading the energy of a room. And I remember one time our professor said that we're responsible for the energy we put out but we're also for the responsible for the energy we allow in. Mm-hmm. And when we know that is negative or toxic and you choose to sit there, then you choose to reap the consequences. Wow. Because, you know, just like we've talked about earlier, there's no thought, there's, there's no words that go unnoticed in your brain. Mm-hmm. Your p- brain is processing every word that you say and every word everyone else says. Mm-hmm. So if you tell me, the blue dog ran under the road and I'm like, what blue. And so I have to process mm-hmm. what you say. And then I'm like, he can't run under a road. You mean run under the car? Right. You know? So you're processing the whole time. So other people's words are affecting you. Mm-hmm. You just don't think it because you're not saying it. So if they're telling you how terrible their life is, how terrible their health is, how terrible their husband is. How, and it's every single time, not an event, then you feel like you walked out with a bucket of dirty poured on you and you're Mm -hmm. like, golly. I know it. And a lot of times you'll feel tired. You might even get sick after you'll get a headache. Those are all signs that your brain has processed someone else's toxic energy. Right. Really? Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Because you're, and if your brain's not used to that, because your brain's built for efficiency and it, it loves the wires that you put in for it. And when someone else is putting in something different and you're like, Hey, hang on, I've got to, I've got to process all that. And it, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And my husband knows someone that she owns her illnesses. I say, and I said, all she has left is to give them a name. And, um, (laughs) It, it's hard. My mother has uh, someone like that too. And you listen to that and, and it's not that they don't have the illness and it's not that they don't hurt because they really are. But when that's all they talk about, that's all their brain is processing and they don't realize they're actually making their symptoms worse right. and they're decreasing their immune system because you're, you're dumping cortisol. Your brain is not going to build a better immune system for you Mm-mm. when you're dumping in cortisol. But I notice because I'm very aware of energy that I'm like, wow. I'm like tired. Wow. And it mm-hmm. it's it is toxic. It, it is. truly is. It is. Is it it's and you try to void those toxic relationships, but then there's sometimes there's history. You yes. Know? There's a lot of history. Or if it's your parent and you have well, to then, go, yeah. Yeah. you kind of have to like yeah. Right. Okay, so can you I this is a two part question. What do you think about your husband? Can your husband be a, your best friend? I always tell my husband, you're my best friend. (laughs) And I always tell him that, oh, you're my best friend. And he's like, no, I'm not. (laughs) And I'll say, well, and I'll say, well, mostly, except for when I talk about you. (laughs) So I think he is 90% of the time, except for when I'm having a moment where he's driving me nuts. Right. And I don't want to expect him to give me friend advice when he's the friend I'm talking about. Right. So that's when I always go to Carla or Kimberly and I'm like, hey, he's driving me nuts. Yeah. And because we think very differently. He's slow. Engineer. I always say death could walk faster than him. Oh my gosh. He's Greg. (laughs) Yes. And and sometimes I teach and I'll do, I'll walk circles around him while he's walking down the aisle at Lowe's and I'm like, for the love of God, please pick the screw. I don't get, and he'll go, this one's eight, six, eights. And I'm like, just pick one. Mm-mm. And it, oh, it makes me crazy. And I'm, fa- I can mess up three times before he's ever even started. I'm right. like, come on. So he does drive me nuts on things like that. And my friends and I will tease about that. And it takes him three hours to get ready for bed. Oh, And I'm like, what are you doing? I know. I know. I, like I think, when you tell me I'm ready for bed, that. I'm like, I'm in. It's in. Let's go. Wash that face, brush those teeth, get in there. <laughs> I'm I'm done. And right. I'm like, and he'll be cutting up fruit for in the morning. And and it'll take him like six minutes to set the timer on the coffee. I'm like, 
what <laughs> buttons are you mashing? <laughs> now, how long have y'all been married? <laughs> Almost four years. Four years. Okay. We're at, we're at nine. We just hit nine, I believe. So yeah, yeah. And I think that Greg would probably not want to be my best friend. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to listen to all your crap. Yeah. I really don't. I mean, t- call Meg or yeah. call Ellen or call, call Karen. Somebody, yeah. Call someone. So yeah, I'm just, I mean, I'm curious because women, like you said, and men, everybody, everybody has a different brain. Yes. Yeah. Even in, so explain to us. Your husband is an engineer. Yes. You are a creative soul. I'm a creative soul. My husband's not an an engineer. He's an executive, but just a very different... Detail-oriented. Yeah, Mm -hmm. very detailed. And um, again, my friends aren't like that, though, Mm -hmm. you know? And And, and I tend to not pick people to stay in my time space who are slow. Because it gives me so much frustration and I'm like, oh, please hurry. <laughs> and I, like, that's why Carla and I work so good together. And I'm telling you, we could lift. Matter of fact, we did one weekend, we unloaded my storage building and this one farm table that I have, that's 14 feet long. And she and I both unloaded that ourselves, lifted it, put it in the back of the pickup. And we're like, you will not tell us we're not going to get it. And my husband was like, it's not going to fit. It's not gonna. I'm like, yeah, you watch us. <laughs> and we got it in. And I'm like, He's still measuring and doing the... Isn't that something? And I'm like, but I also know when I want something done meticulously and perfectly, yes. he's the first person I call. I don't want me doing it. No. I'm like, okay, hey, I need you to do this. Right. He or uh, Carla could he, not. Yeah. No, it's, no. It's not. It, it's, it's him. It, it's him. Right. <laughs> you know, and that that's true. You know, Greg, he he says, he goes, I know what you're thinking. I know. But, uh, but honestly, he's, he'll listen to this. And, no, I don't want to be uh, your best friend. Uh-uh. But I mean, I do say, I, you are my best friend. You're my soulmate. Yes. There you go. Right. And I tell, you know, because... I, I definitely depend on him for when I'm sad, I want to mm-hmm. tell him about it. Yeah. And, and I love that his brain doesn't work like mine then. And, and our joke at our house, cause I always talk about brains is, Hey, I need your brain. Mm-hmm. And so I tell him, matter of fact, last night I was soaking in the bathtub and that's always when I have my most creative thoughts because I think I have to stop and be still. And so I said, Hey, come in here. I need your brain. And so I was telling him all these ideas I have, and we're about to build in the porch and build me a new office. And I knew he would be logical and where I'm the dreamer. And I said, can that even be done? Can we put a wall right there? Or is that like a load bearing wall? And what, and he answered me, you know, and he was like, no, we can do this and we can do that. And have you thought about if you want windows opening out? Because if you open in, it'll take up part of your space. And I was like, oh, wow. That's why I need you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, I lean on Greg quite a bit because I've said this in the, the last series we did. I am a horrible manager. Uh, I am just, I'm not too. a good, I can manage my house like no other, but I am not a good manager with, with people, especially well, uh, employees. Uh-huh. And um, because I want everyone to love me so much and Greg could give a rat's ass uh-huh. if I loved him. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, he, he, I mean, he, 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 he likes people lo- like him, but th- not in business. That's right. just not. You got to get the job done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, and, I, and I beat around the bush and so, and I want to be your friend and uh-huh. I, you know what I mean? It's, and it's just a different personality, it is. you know? Just a thousand percent. And it's so nice to have, you know, and people always say, oh, you're so different than me. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Because if we all thought like me, I mean, the world would be crazy. (laughs) (laughs) You and I run the world. We'd be crazy. (laughs) And I would be running from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, because everything looks like a great idea in my head. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get it done. I want to come up with a great idea and then I want to pass it off. And like, can you please make this happen? Right. And so I saw a picture on Pinterest of this cute little she shed that was built on somebody's back porch. And I was like, oh, I want that. That's what I want. I need light to do my best work. I need to be outside to do my best work. Why have I not thought of that sooner? I need an office outside. And so I just texted my husband the picture and I said, can you please build this for me by the end of 2020? (laughs) And he wrote back and said, Yes, if you're serious. And because I always am just dreaming, dreaming, oh, dreaming. Yeah. And I said, perfectly serious, give me a deadline. And he <laughs> said, maybe mid November. Wow. I need measurements. And I was like, on it. On it. And but he'll tell me exactly what I need. And then I give him that information. And I'll just tell him, like, okay, I want it to be cute. 
cute is always at the top of the list of the things. Because we're beauty people. I know. And I said, I'm going to P.S., by the way, paint the brick on the back of our house. And he was like, what? And I said, it'll be enclosed. It won't look like the house. And I was like, I don't want this doo-doo brown color in my office. No. No. And so I was like, okay, I'm painting this. I want windows that open. I want light in. I want fresh air in. Oh, and I want French doors. And he was like, okay. Okay. Next. Yeah. Next. Yeah. See, then he is your friend. Yes. He, he is. He's is a great he gets friend. You. Yes. He gets you. Greg gets me. And he doesn't, He. I started to say he doesn't judge me. Sometimes he judges me, but he doesn't hold on to it. He just knows that's me. Yeah. And he told my little son today, he was like, cause I was trying to get ready and, you know, I always get in a frenzy and I'm like, Oh, did I get this? Did I get that? And Brady was walking in to ask me some goofy question. And, and Butch said, Hey, you might want to wait till your mom's out of there. Not a good time. <laughs> See, <laughs> I was like, thank you. <laughs> knows you. Exactly. exactly. You know, and, um, this marriage that, that I have, that it's a fabulous marriage. Mm-hmm. Greg, if I own my issues, for example, control freak, like I want to control everything okay. in the house, you know, like, you know, TC football game tickets. Okay. Well, I need them. Nope. Uh-uh. You know, I'm just control, 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 uh-huh. Be- the bed, this, this, that, and the other. And I said to him the other day, I said, you know, you're talking to the control freak here. He couldn't say that uh-huh. to me. There's no way I would beat his ass. <laughs> You know what I mean? I would. I mean, there's no way he could say that to me. But I said it. It like, it just gave us this fresh. I know. Uh I just looked. He just, I know he looked at me and went, thank goodness she knows that and she owns Owns it. it. You know what I mean? And and, and, and it's true. And we have at our house, this is a secret tip. And even though we're not on the relationship one right now. No. uh, When we have a code word at our house, leprechaun. And (laughs) because like when my husband gets in his anal retentive engineer and I want to punch him. And when I get in my frenzy and like, I want it now. Uh And he sometimes he'll do this. (laughs) And that means I'm the exorcist and my head's spinning around backwards. But we just start going leprechaun. Oh no. Leprechaun. And I'm like, Oh, am I acting like that? Oh, I love it. And so my son will tell me too, mom, you're acting like a leprechaun. And I'm like, really? Okay. But it happens so quick mm-hmm. that I don't realize I'm acting like that. And normally when it's you behaving that way and your brain fires at the beginning of a cycle and at the end of a cycle and the rest of our habits are in the middle, we don't even fire those anymore. And so we don't know we've done something crazy until we get to the end of that brain cycle. And so if somebody can catch you when you're in the middle of it, is the only way you can pause yourself and get out. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we developed a code word. I'm like, okay. And I'll tell my husband, you are leprechauning the hell out of this. (laughs) When he's starting to tell me like Mm -hmm. detail and I'm like, oh my God, I don't care. No, no, leprechaun. Uh, Leprechaun. Abort. (laughs) Abort. Well, Well, talking about going crazy, have you have you had a moment like that with any of your friends? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yee. And matter of fact, Carla and I, we both we've we've laughed at ourselves about the things that you know we'll just oh look lose it. And then there are some times when you know she's told me stuff, and I'm like that hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. And then I've, I'm sure I've done the same to her too. But we know that's what's great about that kind of friendship. And that's, what's very different than a casual friendship because some of my casual friends, if they say stuff like that to me, I'm probably not going to be their friend anymore. Right. But when Carl and I say the truth, even if like, God, Lee, that was a little stingy. We're like, I know you love me and you've got my best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's very different than the person that was talking about me that I heard from another friend or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Wow, that hurts my feelings. Yeah, and you know uh, the honesty of being a friend as well. And and I have a friend that we nip at each other from time to time, and she's one of my very best uh-huh. friends. And and I've gone crazy on her, and she's gone crazy on me. But we know we love each uh-huh. other, and it's unconditional, right. definitely unconditional. But you know they see that side. You know you have to show your colors. Yeah, your true colors. Absolutely, yeah. you're not perfect all the oh, time for yeah. sure. Oh god. And Carla's been through my several divorces with yeah. me. And- it's yeah. like, are you, how many times are you going to screw this up before you get it right? I'm like, oh, I'm, trying. <laughs> I'm trying, I know. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, and then there's the friends, again, like you were talking about with your friend. I haven't talked, one of my friends in Austin, um, 
our daughters are best friends. And I'm telling you, I won't talk to her for six months, but then we just pick right back up. Yes. Yeah. That, that's so fun. I know. It's a good, it's not, but I don't see her every day. So, right. but I still. But that's a different kind too. Yeah. Different kind of friend. Different kind of friend. Mm-hmm. Man, that is interesting. So interesting. So what, t- tell us about the, uh, when you and your husband have friends and the wives just don't jive uh-huh. or, the, or the husband. And that goes for any of you listening, right. dating. I mean, that you just don't like that person. I oh, know yeah. that's happened before. Yeah, And <laughs> you, I always say I'll be cordial and I'll be nice to anybody. And I am not a mean person at all. But I also realize I have to be responsible for my energy. And so I'll, you know, tell my husband, I'm like, okay, I'll go with you. But when I give you the signal, I, I got to go. Mm-hmm. And either we're going to take two cars and wow. I'll, you know, leave myself and you're welcome to stay because I'm not going to tell you not to be friends with them. Or if you want to take one car, then you're going to have to go when I give you the thumbs up. You have a plan. Yes, we have a plan going in. That's the most important thing people need to do. Why? Because your brain, when you're in the middle of a frenzy or an upset meltdown or whatever, you're in the limbic system of your brain. That's where your emotional center is. And that's where the amygdala is. That's the fight, flight, freeze. And so you are not thinking and you can never, ever, ever come up with a good thought process when you're in an emotional frenzy. And that's why when people are sad, they make terrible decisions. Mm. When they're mad, they make terrible decisions. Also, when you're super on a high and something great's happened, you also should not make decisions then either. Because all of that is a heightened emotional state and you're not in your prefrontal cortex where your judgment, reasoning, thinking skills are. Mm-hmm. So you need to always make a plan When you're in a normal state for what you'll do in a meltdown or a frenzy or whatever. That's why we developed the code word leprechaun on a time when we weren't fighting. And I, you know, I remember asking my husband, like, what's the thing that I do that drives you nuts? And he was like, I was like, really? And I was like, okay, you need to leprechaun me on that one. But the same way when we get with these friends and I'm like, I'm out, like they're wearing me out and I'll just excuse myself, you know? And so a lot of times we'll take two cars because wow. I, you know, I know he wants to stay and visit sure. and whatever. And that's, I wouldn't that's want fine. him to make oh, me leave No, Mm-mm. and vice versa. And he'll go, okay. And you know, if we have to go to an art show or whatever, cause mm-hmm. I love one, he'll go, okay. I'm but out. when I, when I've looked at like 12 stick men and I'm got to tell how great the background <laughs> and foreground is like, I'm going to go. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it, it is a unique to me, it's very unique when you have the husband and wives that just get along they so click. incredibly well. Yeah. And they do. And um, we have three of my three of my girl's best friends. Greg is best friends with her husband. Oh, I mean, like not best uh-huh. friends, but the, he is very close and tight. And to me, that is such an unusual, mm-hmm. very unusual. Right? right. Yeah. It's a blessing. That is a blessing. It happens very rarely. I know. And boy, you don't want to travel with all of them. That's for sure. I know. <laughs> You know what I mean? Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. We went to Italy in 2018 and his fraternity brothers and his brother. And we, oh gosh, there's how many? It was eight of us, I guess. Yee. Traveling. But it was oh. fabulous. It was, now, this is all their friends. This mm. is, they all went to TCU together and they're just big buddies and grew up together. And I'm the one that came in, you know, the back door. Uh-huh. I, I'm the, the late, the, the one came in last. But they, I mean, it's just such a lovely, lovely relationship. Right. Yeah, it is. That's it the way is. I feel about the Aggies. And they yes. eat, drink, breathe. Drink. And, oh. and I've learned to whoop. I, <laughs> all you Aggies out there, I can do that. <laughs> you can do it because you're not an Aggie. No, and that's like a whole thing cult. too. Yes. yes, family tradition. And I remember, sorry, I didn't say cult. I know, I say cult sometimes. Oh, geez. Geez. We're sorry. Um, <laughs> but when you don't go there, it feels like it. And But when the first time I went to an Aggie football game, and my husband had kind of told me, you know, all the stuff. And he played football there. So it's Did even, he really? Yeah, it's, it, he was on the cotton ball. He's got two big cotton ball rings. and it's, Wow. Yeah, it's so fun. Mm-mm. So he feels really differently about the football games. But he was telling me, okay, you need to do this. And then they're going to sing the song and whatever. And the first time I went, I was like, 
Did I do it right? This man, is, his leg's on me. Why is his leg on me? He put his leg on top of me. What is he doing? Well, in the middle of their song, they lock yeah. arms and let, well, he neglected to, to tell, tell me you. that thing. And this man's got his leg on me and he's crotched over. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> and so I'm just leaning. I'm like, we've entered an alternate universe. What is happening right now? The Aggies are and, loving this. And then when they do that, saw the show shorty's horns off or what and then they short that's the only part of that school song i know and when we get to that part and short short (laughs) that's friends right there oh my goodness now did the women go as well yes and almost all of them graduated from there except me oh dear you know and i'm this little hillbilly that just shows up and wears maroon (laughs) yay short whoop i can (laughs) know Yeah, yeah. But yeah. what's sweet about them, and those are fun friends to have mm-hmm. as well, is they've accepted me in. You know, I don't have the ring. They sure. all do the what year and yeah. all the thing and howdy. Yeah. And I'm like, why do y'all say howdy? That's so yeah. weird. That's very and we're country. That's folk. very hee haw right there. That's hee haw. <laughs> <Doomed. laughs> Deep dark depression. <laughs> why would they say howdy? That's just weird. <laughs> And, but they love me and they're nice right. and they're fun. And right. we just talk about what fun maroon thing we found to wear. Cause it's not like a big color. And right. Yeah. Unless but, you go to college station. Unless you go to college station. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. And we got to go to the chicken and yeah. Dixie all, chicken. And it burned down and Didn't people it? donated a bajillion dollars <laughs> oh to build gosh. back this chicken. <laughs> Sorry, Aggies. <laughs> Sorry, Aggies. I um, love the chicken. It. She really does love it. I know. Right? Okay, so take me here because I will tell you, and I, we talked about this in the last, uh, the first of the series. Um, so we're talking about loving ourselves. My daughter is my best friend. And you said that can't. Can't be. Yes, it can, <laughs> Stacy. <laughs> She's my bestie. It cannot. I'm sorry to say. She can almost be your best friend. She can be like 90% your best friend. But as a mom, you always have a different bond with a child. And they're your child first, your friend second. And a real best friend is just your friend. And nothing else. You see my face. Yeah. I don't want to believe this. I don't want to believe it. But this. if you had to, like, you know, if somebody said, hey, I've got one bullet, I'm taking one of these people out. And oh. it, it was your friend and your child. Oh. It, it's different. Oh, gosh. And so our our children, you know, like I said, too, my daughter is, she's almost my best friend, right. too. Right. Brooklyn's your... Yes. And I'm like, she's, I love her. Oh. But she was my daughter before she was my friend. And our friends just became our friends. But like, you know, when Brooke was in diapers and a toddler and all, she wasn't my best friend. No, heck no. But as she grew up, she has grown into a friend, Mm -hmm. but she started out as my daughter. 1000%. And Mm -hmm. I couldn't say that when Kennedy was 14, she was my best friend. No, 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 definitely not. Not at all. And, and, you know, um, it, it, it's, I, you know, you have talked at this, I talked about this. She at 21 is kind of parenting me, uh-huh. you know, because I'm parenting my dad and, right. and, um, not, he still parents me too, but I, and, you know, it's, it's a different, different state, but I just want to believe that she's my best friend. She like, can be almost it. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait, we're not talking about the, I, when I was, when she was in high school or even now, I'm not trying to be the cool mom. That's right. not, I'm not trying to be her best friend because, you know, I'm trying to be the cool mom. Right. This, that, I, I was never that. Yeah, I'm not that either. You know, I, I, that wasn't, I didn't buy the shirt. I didn't do the thing. No. And no. people used to try to sell those shirts that said Brent's mom or Brooke's mom. And I was like, I, my vagina knows I'm their mother. I'm not, I don't know if you can say that. One thousand percent. I was like, I don't need a shirt that no. says I'm your mom. No. Right. I, and it doesn't need. And Brooke used to cheer. She did competitive cheer, and they won the national championship on ESPN. I was there oh, on wow. the front row. It was fabulous. But people get all in that world, and I didn't need glitter and all that to be her mom. I was no. there for Brooke not for the event. And that's, you know, that's true. Cause people think I want to be their friend. I'm going to be, I'm going to be the coolest mom out there. That's very different mm-hmm. than I count on you and you're my, mm-hmm. my lifelong buddy. Mm-hmm. You know, and with my daughter, only child, just definitely hot helicopter mom. Uh. I've said that before to you, but, but and I ran a shot, uh, a tight ship with her. I mean, very disciplined, um, you know, but 
it, it just has it has it, you cultivated this friendship of common respect. Right. And she will say to me, you know, I, I'm I'm afraid to disappoint you, and that's a child. Right. I mean, that's I think still a child. I am I am afraid to disappoint my father. You right. know, my dad. I just like oh, I thought I know I need to call him. I I haven't called him today, and you know, it's just and and my but my dad's not my best friend. Right. You know. And, and I and I would say too that, you know, your daughter especially because my daughter's 27, and as each phase of her life gets older and she goes through something that I've talked about, she's like. Oh, now I see what mom meant by that. Wow. And so she gets wiser as a friend as she goes through those stages. But she is just now, you know, she's 27. So she's had relationships come and go and ones that were good and bad. And she was like, mom, I see now why you stay places that you don't want to be when you have kids involved. And I was like, yeah, moms will do a lot when it comes to their children. But as a 14 year old or an 18 no. year old, she would have never known that. Never known that. And I can say too, my dad is almost my best friend. Is he? Uh-huh. And I, you know, and, and even my mom, my mom, I would say is my best cheerleader and my most encourager. And I call my mother when things are really great, because I know she is going to be Oh, she's going to be so proud for me. And she's going to tell her little church ladies and she's going to tell her mm -hmm. sister and she's oh. going to have the whole world rooting for me. And I also know if I need somebody to pray, by golly, she's call mom. This. And she's got a hundred people on the line, like they're <laughs> praying. But dad and I are different kind of friends because my dad is the rebel in me. He's the free spirit in me. Mm -hmm. He he calls me almost every single morning sitting on his front porch because he knows I'm sitting on my porch. Oh, and he'll say, are you doing your meditating? And I said, I sure am. And he'll tell me what animals he's seen. And we talk about, you know, the the universe and our universal spirit and stuff that nobody else cares about or gets. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, dad and I do. We've got that same. We get it. Right. And that's not what I call my mom for. Mm -mm. But it doesn't mean that I like her more or less. Mm -hmm. You just have different friends for different oh, things. 1000%. And like I have movie friends and I have exercise friends and they're not the same not friends. The same friends. And I have art friends. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good for women to, you know, it's, of course it's great to have a best friend because that, that helps your brain and it helps your body, but it's also great to have friends for things so that you don't have to go by yourself. So you're not that person who has the 0.5 friend. Yes. And, yeah. and sometimes women don't cultivate that. And we don't, especially at this age, we don't know where to go get that or mm -mm. what to do. And I can tell you my mom, she's got Julian friends. She's got little church lady friends. And then she's got her old elementary school friends. And she's got friends to do pretty much everything she's mm -hmm. ever wants to do with much better than I do. And I have learned as I get older to just put myself out there a little bit more. And invite people to go eat lunch or, hey, you want to go get some coffee? And you've got to get over that fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. And I think rejection, which is a trigger for almost all women in our brain, keeps us from friendships. That's interesting. Because I think it, we think, oh, they're going to think she I'm goofy me, yeah. or they're going to think I'm needy or I only met her once. What is she going to think? I want right. something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, we recently, and I told you about this, um, gosh, I don't even know, you know, with COVID, you don't even know what year it is, but in, <laughs> it, it's been a, we were together a year in July. We call us the Mahjong sisters. So, um, I actually knew Sheila, one of the girls, and then the other two girls, I had seen them at football games or around town. Um, but I was new to Fort Worth. Greg's from Fort Worth. And then we, I was in Austin raising Kennedy right. mm -hmm. and then came up here in the, when she went to TCU and this woman, Dawn reached out to us not knowing she didn't know any of us like, mm. no, no, uh -huh. but she's just like, I like y'all. You're cool. And to be in Mahjong in this group, you have to take lessons uh -huh. and it's like this group. And, um, she reached out to all three of the three of us and we were, uh, what a commitment it was to learn to play. We had to have six solid weeks wow. of lessons and, uh, so we can play and then, of course, COVID happens and we haven't seen each other in like three months. Uh, and it's been very depressing because at 50, let's say 50s, we're 50 to 60, the age. Uh -huh. And um, the things you talk about are different. 
oh, then when I was in my 30s and right. 40s going through a divorce or babies mm-hmm. or gosh, the baby won't sleep. And what we have in that little foursome is so incredible. Right. Now, we'll, you know, yes. Dawn's mom recently died. We all, I mean, rallied and, you know, but these haven't been lifelong. But I guess at 50, yes. you can call. And, and it's so great to have friends for those mm-hmm. things. Yeah. And and like, we're, matter of fact, we're fixing to go to Denison when we le- I leave here to go to my son's ball game. Uh-huh. And my son's wife's mother is one of, I love her. She is yes, a you do. great <laughs> friend. Yes. And oh. we, we all went to New York together and I just love her. and. I think, you know, I told Brent, I was like, thank you for giving me Deanna, but thank you for giving me Christy because, and I know that she loves my son and I treasure that. But then she knows I love her daughter. And, but because we're, you know, similar age and we're, our kids, you know, are married and we have a similar interest And those similar interests are ways that you can cultivate things, whether it's bridge, whether it's, you know, yoga, what all the things. And I think people get hung up on trying to find a new best friend. Yeah, I know. And that may not happen, Mm -mm. but you can find some friends that you can cultivate some relationships with and you can do some things with. And even though you may not have somebody that can bring you chicken soup when you're sick, you have somebody to go to the movie with Mm -hmm. and that's better than nothing. Yeah. And you have somebody, you know, to chit chat and go get coffee with after yoga, that's Mm -hmm. better than nothing. Right. And we tend to think we have all or none Mm -hmm. and like, I don't have any friends, you know? Yeah. Well, you can make some, Mm -hmm. Yeah. you got to put yourself out there. And that's where it goes back to what we talked about last week about your confidence and your self-worth. If you don't have self-worth, you will not put yourself out there because if you can't love you, you can't imagine how they could love you. Right. Like what would they want to be my friend for? What do I have to offer? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm fun as hell. That's why you want to be my friend. <laughs> absolutely. doesn't want to be. Absolutely. <laughs> so can you be friends with your, your, your son's wife? Yes. I think not, not best friends because she will always, you know, have a different, Mm-hmm. interest, but I love her and she's precious and we like to go shop and, sure. and, you know, but she is somebody I would say is a friend. We're friendly, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to, when I'm mad at my son for some dumb thing he did, I'm not going to tell her cause she'll take up for him cause right. that's her husband and she should. Right. You know what? And I, and it's kind of switching gears here, but I, my daughter, The friends she had in high school, she is best friends with two of her friends from high school. And I mean, they are tight. They're thick as thieves. That's unusual. Yeah. Yeah. And um, which that's what I'm pointing out is I think they feel badly because the they called them the Fab Five. That they were really, really good friends. Um, all cheered together. And you know, they've gone to different universities or different, you know, different different areas of the United States. And I think that it's okay that you're not best friends. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's okay that you're not that high school because that's all you have. Yeah. You know? And as your world grows, your friend groups grow. Yes. And with some of my dearest friends, I have a little mastermind group that we talk every day on Marco Polo. Mm-hmm. And one of them I've never met in person. And I've never met Kelly in my life. She lives wow. in Omaha, Nebraska, but I talk to her every single day. I know her kids. I know her husband. I know her dog's name. I know all the things. Mm-hmm. And we talk every day because wow. we have a similar interest. We're all entrepreneurs growing a business. And so it's Denise, Nadia, Kelly, and I, and we talk every single day and You're kidding. every day. Never met them. Never met them. I mean, I've met Nadia and Denise twice, Mm -hmm. but I've never met Kelly. And I would definitely say they're my friends. We've cried together. One of them is going through breast cancer. One of them, you know, just had a miscarriage. We've hurt, you know, that when I was worried about Brady's heart last week, Mm -hmm. they were there, you know, what can we do and cheering me on, encouraging me. And, you know, so sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to be a friend with skin on yes. to consider the benefits that it could give you just knowing somebody is in your corner. And like I said, they may not be the chicken soup friend. They may not be able to come there, Mm -hmm. but it's important to have people that you can talk to, that you can count Mm -hmm. on, that you can, that'll be happy when you're happy and they'll be sad when you're sad. Right. Right. You know, um, the, 
the kind of call my trifecta here, my best friends. One, my friend Ellen, she's um, she's in her forties and has young children, and we were with them in Austin last weekend, and and um, the advice you know she seeks from me, right, is so lovely, and I feel so trusted and so loved, and because she's asking me and giving me vulnerable parenting right information and i'm trying to help her so desperately you know i mean yeah. it's not bad stuff it's just oh gosh just life it's yeah. just life it's just life you know um and it's so refreshing to be able to reciprocate because they've been there when i was divorced right. or they my heart was broken and and you know those friendships cultivating the next night i go with my other friend taryn we are talking about our children we're in the same phase of life right you know the ups and downs of children and and it's okay that your kids aren't always up right and you know it's so funny that you say that because i have the unique perspective of raising children in two separate generations. And she I've been did. raising kids since 1989. <laughs> I'm tired. Now, guys, she has your oldest is he'll be 31 in a few weeks. And then Brooklyn is 27. 27. And Brady's 12. 12. <laughs> <laughs> Almost 20 years between there. Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So I think, you know, by the time Brady's in junior high, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, by the time he graduates, I have literally have been raising children for over 40 years. <laughs> oh and so it's hard sometimes for me when I'm with the other 12 year old moms oh gosh. that are, you know, in their thirties sure. where I was the first time I had a 12 year old. And then I'm like, Oh uh, yeah. Tell me they haven't yeah. asked you for uh, your uh, grandmother. Uh, please no, they have you. not. Knock on wood. Thank goodness. Because <laughs> you're so cute. Uh, <laughs> okay, don't. No I'll, one call her the grandmother. Don't call anybody a grandmother. Ever. <laughs> or ask anyone if they're pregnant. Yeah. Oh, I made that mistake one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, don't do that. Don't That's ever. not your friend. Uh -uh. That no. is not your friend. <laughs> but I, I noticed I was getting, I was feeling sorry for myself when we were first in all these little circles because they're young and cute and their butt's still where it belongs yeah. and all. And sure. so I was feeling like we talked about last week, self-conscious and not as good. And, oh, I don't, I'm, I don't want to go be the mom that brings the popsicles. Yeah. I'll give you 30 bucks and you can go buy some, but I don't want to go do that. <laughs> and I, I could catch myself really easily feeling sorry for myself and thinking that I'm never going to fit in with this group. I don't have any friends here. And I have to tell myself all the time, Stacy, stop. Right. This is a figment of your own mind. And so I just started talking to random people there and, you know, they'd go, oh, Stacy, we saved you a seat. And you will find that people could care less what you do, any of that. Mm -hmm. They care how you make them feel. Right. And if you make somebody laugh, if you make them feel good, if you talk about their kids, if you know the things that you can do to cultivate a relationship and a friendship, even if it's a superficial sitting at the ball game one, then you can have a friend. You don't exactly. sit there by yourself. Do not be one of those people with 0.5 friends. I know. Put yourself out there and give yourself some opportunities to meet people. We right. close ourselves off, but then we're mad because we're closed off. Right. And most of that is a product of our own right. doing. You know, um, I, 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 I want to bring this up because I do have younger audience and sorority recruitment was, is, has been happening at different universities. It might be put off, but you know, young girls in high school, you, you go and young boys, this happens that yes. boys and girls, fraternities and sororities, and they go into a university, possibly going from being big man on campus at, at their high school. And then sororities turn them down, fraternities turn them down. And I just invite these young women and men to know that that's not it. Right. There's life after that. There's life after that. And you are going to find your, your, your collegiate, your high school, your junior high, your collegiate, your professional friends, you're going to find it. Yes. And you don't, have but they need to go find them. Yes. And so many times they just sit back and wait for a friend to come yes. find you. And I think, you know, and I have lots of students that I taught that got turned down from, you know, certain sororities and then some that got in and flourished. Yeah. And I remember I was terrible sorority material. Um, I Were was, you oh, really? The, I, I lasted three days. 
I'm not good at people telling me what to do and I do not follow rules well. <laughs> and I remember I had to dress up like a bunny oh, no. and hop around campus yeah. dropping these little egg things. And I remember I threw that egg basket and I was like, hell no, no. Doing that. I ain't a bunny for nobody. <laughs> ain't <And> nobody's <laughs> bunny. <laughs> and I, I was fine with it. I was like, you know what? I don't fit in. I don't fit that world. Right. And I still don't. I'm not a good, if there's a set of rules so you can apply, wow. I, I always back away. Okay, so see, I found the first difference that we have that we could see. Yeah. I was Miss Sorority. Oh girl. no, I was not. I threw the rabbit <laughs> in the basket. I pulled the tail off. I threw it all on the middle floor. I was like, I'm not doing this. See, no. and back when we were in college, there was there was a yes. You could you, make people do a lot of. stuff You can make then. people do a lot of stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I did it. I did it. Yes, I, ma'am. See, I did not. I did it with a ma'am and a smile. Oh. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. <laughs> no, none of those women are my friends anymore. <laughs> So see there. I know, right? Well, I have enjoyed this so much. And I just want people to know, put yourself out there. Yes. You know, put your hearts out there. Put your heart out there. And even if it's little by little by little that you need to make a friend, whether it be at church, whether it's at the ball game, whether it's at the swimming pool, wherever it is, sometimes they're waiting for a friend too. Oh, yeah. And all it takes is one person to go, hey, you want to come sit over here? Or hey... Mm -hmm. You know, let's go to lunch after the ball game or just, yeah. and you never know what someone else is going through and how they feel. And it's so, they probably need a friend too. Absolutely. And I, I believe that so hard, wholeheartedly. And the older I get, I believe it more and more and more. more and and more. smile. Yes. Smile. Be happy. Make someone else smile. It's so important. Okay. I'm going to tell you a small thing that made me think of it. I'm going to borrow your pen. Okay. Okay. So for all of you out there who want to know how to get a secret dose of happiness, smiling is one of the best ways. It dumps in instant dopamine in your system, and it'll also give you a shot of endorphins, and endorphins block pain. And so those are the things that your brain is doing that you want it to do that's beneficial. And so I used to tell people, you know, you just need to smile more. And they're like, I can't smile. I'm miserable. Oh, gosh. And I... But your brain, we've got 43 cranial muscles in our face and they're connected to your brain. So your brain knows when you're smiling that you're happy and it just starts dumping in the juice. So, you know, but if you do this, like that's not going to work. <laughs> Teeth, just, it, yeah. it, it has to be a real smile. It's called a Duchenne smile. And there's a French scientist who came up with this and it crinkles the sides of your eyes. If you haven't Botox them <laughs> and it also lifts your cheeks up. But if you cannot make yourself smile and you're in a terrible mood or you're feeling, you know, down and out or whatever, this is a secret I do all the time. I always keep a stick, a straw or a pen with me at all times. I promise I'm going to wash this. If you'll cram it all the way back to the back of your mouth like this. <laughs> all the way back. It, it will. Ma- if you hold it for about 15 seconds, you're, you'll feel yourself start laughing. Your brain, you'll know at that moment, your brain has dumped in the dopamine. Okay. So if those of you not watching on YouTube, she just took my pen and shoved it in her mouth all the way all back. All the way to the back molar. Uh-huh. Hor- horizontally. Went all the way back to the back molar. She looks like a... <laughs> crazy. Crazy. <laughs> she looks a little crazy right now. But she's smiling beyond words for sure. And for it, sure. It works every... And here we're so safe about COVID. I know. Oh, I yeah. promise. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we are. Everything has been sterilized. <laughs> we knew that was going to happen. It was staged. Like, what's she doing here? But that but makes you smile. It works every time and it'll dump out the dopamine. So in my car, in the carpool line is the most brutal. I feel myself losing my oh, energy I and I have do. a meltdown. And I don't know what it is about the carpool people. I think to be in the carpool job, you've got to be evil. <laughs> but the lady that runs the, the old carpool we used to be in, she would stand there with her legs kind of spread out. She reminded me of the trunch bull, if you've ever old enough and watched Matilda. <laughs> and she would do this very aggressively. Yeah, because I'm happy. Like pulling go, your arms. And I want to yeah. go, 
you don't have to tell me to go <laughs> forward. There's no other way for me to go. Like, I can't go backwards. Right. I'll back over the cars. I can't go sideways. I'll run into the school or right. small children. Right. You don't need to do this. Angry. Yes. So I would pick my son up and I would have a, a popsicle stick in my mouth and- or a pencil and I'd be driving, <laughs> oh smiling like this. And he was like, Mom, you're so embarrassing. Oh, no. And I was like, it's either dopamine or I'm going to run over That's her. Right. Take your pick. And he yeah. was like, like get in the car you know? get in the car and go yeah yeah but well, smiling is huge smiling and- is huge and the research on that that you can get a friend if you smile is massive i can't remember the exact number but it's in the 40 percentile that goes up for people who smile really? nobody you don't want to be somebody's friend who's sitting around grouchy and grumpy i know unless you already know them and you mm-hmm. forgive them but like you're not going to look at a line of people in a lineup and go oh yeah. That mean guy right there, I'm all on it. That's my new best friend. Right. You look for people that look happy, have a countenance of joy. That's who you look for. Mm-hmm. So they're also looking for that in you. Yeah. So smile more and you'll have you more know friends. What? And the smiling is for sure. And I and I read something several years ago to try to make someone smile. And I really do. I mean, I try really hard. But the damn mask right now. Yeah. You can't smile. I mean, my... And it also, it, that's one of the reasons people, I think, are so depressed now. Because we have something in our brain called mirror neurons. Wow. And when you smile, I automatically start. I'm like, oh, because my brain knows what that means. Mm-hmm. And so when other people cry, you automatically, you're like, yeah, oh. I get you feel what they feel. It's mirror neurons. And wow. it activates the same neurons in your brain that you see in someone else's brains. Unless you're a sociopath. And then that's how they can tell. <laughs> yep. Because they don't have, those mirror neurons are not activating. Oh, my God fascinating. Yes, it is very fascinating. That's how they're finding out now. They are starting to watch children earlier to see like, oh, they don't respond to emotion like other people do. They don't wow. cry at the movies and mm-hmm. because our neurons are, are firing the same as theirs. Wow. But when we can't see somebody smile and we can't see their cheek rise right. up and we're just looking at their eyes nice. and it's creating a sadness in people mm-hmm. because we depend on that, especially here in Texas where we open doors for people and we say, howdy and all, <laughs> all the things, right. you know, we, we need that. We do. And I that. had a man the other day in Lowe's that says I was, you know, talking to his son and he said, I'm smiling under here. Oh. And I said, me too. Oh, you gosh. know, and I was like, golly, that it makes it sad. It does. And it's hard. I mean, you can smile with your eyes, but it takes yeah. your teeth too. Yeah. And if you have good eyelashes on or. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or not. It, I blink, know. blink, blink, blink. I know. <laughs> I just, I just, I did see the clear mask the other day, but I'm yes. like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just get, let's, let's just move on. Let's everybody. move on. Well, thank you for see, for being here today. You're so welcome. And I look next week we are doing relationship. Significant so can it, oh my goodness. We'll take yeah. some of what we, we learned today and yeah. go, go there. Put it on. But friendships, everyone try to find a friend. If you don't have one, that point fiver. Good yeah. grief. Nobody wants to be a point five. I don't want to be a four, point five. Get out there and go meet some random yeah. somebody and That's say, right. You're fixing to be my new friend. (laughs) Unless they direct message you. Yeah, then don't don't do that. that. Don't do that. Okay, how do we find you? Okay, you can find me at my website is uh, thegratefulbrain.com. And on my website, you can sign up for my free newsletter. Once a week, I send a newsletter giving brain tips and simple strategies to live a happier life. You can also sign up for my Facebook group there. It's a free Facebook group where I go in and give people little tips and tricks on how to change their brain. And you can find me on Instagram at Stacy Danford and it's Stacy with an I. And I have watched her do many keynotes. Thank you. Prepare for keynote speaking. And so you're a, you're ready to get back out on the I'm circuit, ready. aren't you? I know. I know you are. It'll come. I was going to be in Bermuda right now. Oh, no. I'm not there. Not there. <laughs> you're here with me. Yay. Yay. Well, everyone, thank you so much for listening today. Go and follow us on YouTube and comment. we got to get up there in that Apple world. And uh, thanks for listening. Follow me on Tiffany C. Blackman at Instagram. And then my website is Tiffany C. Blackman. And everyone have a wonderful, wonderful day and keep being fabulous.